What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Side of Attack once again, and as promised, we're going to be doing videos every Tuesday and every Saturday. To make sure you're not going to miss one, go ahead and click the subscribe button, especially click that notification bell in case I decide to release anything on a different day. Other than that, we are going to be talking about Darksiders 3 PC performance and what you can do to improve your frame rates, etc., along with how well it was done. Now, it's a different story than you would usually see in the development process of a title and that's because THQ actually shut down and auctioned off part of the way through development for this title so Nordic Games actually purchased all of the assets and then continued the development of this title which can pretty much account for some of the major changes in the gameplay mechanics along with of course some of maybe the lackluster PC options that we see. Before we get started, we'll talk about the test rig that we used. We used actually the Zotac Mech Ultra. Now, this particular model had 16 gigabytes of system memory, along with an i7-8700K at stock and an RTX 2070 from, of course, Zotac. And that all aside, really what we're going to be looking at here is what kind of resources the game is utilizing and the percent change in FPS across every setting. To make another note here, typically I will test with an AMD GPU, but currently the game or the title in question here, Darksiders 3, has some pretty varying performance on AMD GPUs and nothing that I could get locked down as far as the actual percentages. So if you're looking at this, it's mainly going to have an impact on NVIDIA cards as far as the percent change. And if you're on AMD, of course, those changes will, of course, increase your frame rate, but by how much much might be quite a bit different than it is here. I would definitely recommend probably holding off on the game if you do have an AMD GPU until some, of course, drivers or patches to the game itself are made. So right off the bat, once you boot up the game and start playing, you'll notice a couple things if you have any sort of resource management tools monitoring the game itself. The biggest note here is that you're going to only see the CPU usage go across physical cores. It doesn't seem to recognize any of the SMT or hyper threading from both AMD and Intel. And so with that in mind, you are going to be looking at wanting to keep a higher single core clock than anything else. It is able to go ahead and utilize about two cores almost evenly, but definitely favors single thread overall. This does cause bottlenecks on the stock i7-8700K when you're only hitting 4.3 gigahertz and you can see the GPU, in this case the RTX 2070 at 1080p dipping down to 97% usage. It also only ever hit a boost clock of 1710 megahertz while playing the game, meaning that we're about 100 megahertz lower than the max boost clock that I typically see on this card. I've seen it pretty much stay at 1800 plus megahertz on every other time. I'm not sure exactly why we're having that particular issue only with this title. Now moving on to video memory, it's using about 3.2 gigabytes of video memory at 1080p with all the settings turned up. My assumption here is that it's primarily doing this because it was probably with the GTX 1063 gigabyte in mind. At least that would be my tinfoil hat reason for this game only using 3 gigabytes of VRAM at 1080p. And this is on a card that obviously has quite a bit more than that and that was the most that I could ever get it to actually utilize and so actually loading in textures etc isn't that big of a deal on this particular title you're not talking about a game like call of duty or something where you have hundreds of gigabytes of texture data now as far as system memory if you're worried about that it's only going to use about three gigabytes of system memory so even on a windows 10 system eight gigabytes is going to be completely sufficient here and i don't think you're going to have to worry about it much if at all but overall if you guys are still wanting some more frames the first thing we need to talk about is unlocking the locked or capped frame rate of 60 fps and as it is a quite obviously a PC port where you're going to find this is actually in the configuration files and not in the options menu for the game itself. I have a how to on how to unlock it up here and if you get that done on Nvidia cards at least you're going to see nice bumps up to 120 FPS plus and if you need to get a few additional frames to match that 144 hertz panel you got 
we're going to talk about the percent change in FPS by setting right now. Taking a look at it, starting off with the lowest bump in FPS, we have view distance. I would recommend just keeping this as high as possible all the time because view distance is awesome. However, the view distance doesn't appear to really affect the gameplay that much because it is very close quarters and very dependent on a linear storyline in this particular title. So if you want a free 10%, it probably wouldn't affect you too much gameplay wise. It's not like a shooter or something along those lines. From there we see texture quality and I really saw no difference between low texture quality and high texture quality and it doesn't seem like they really had any 4k textures in plan for this title in the first place. So turning this all the way down or all the way up is going to be up to you and it'll net you about 10% in FPS. Next we have anti-aliasing and while this one has about the same percentage change in FPS as as the texture quality with 10%. I do recommend keeping the anti-aliasing on, especially at 1080p, because it does clean up the image quite well, and you'll start noticing some pretty significant jaggies, especially once again at 1080p, if you have this setting turned all the way off. As far as which anti-aliasing method it's using, I didn't dig deep enough to actually figure that out, and I apologize. I usually do get that for you guys, but there was no hint of it in, of course, the options menu, and there's no hint of it in the configuration file, and I'm not exactly sure which one it's using. Next, we have foliage quality with a 12.6% change in FPS, and I didn't notice a ton of difference in the foliage quality. There might be some uh, additional maps behind, of course, the textures on top of that that are going ahead and getting rendered out, but it wasn't anything super noticeable in my experience. Effects quality, which I really have a hard time testing, and it's not one that you can really test reliably, primarily due to the fact that effects are going to happen during fights, and testing between each individual fight without a built-in benchmark is going to be uh, inconsistent to say the least. Now, the numbers I got out of it was a 15.6% change, but like I said, the effects could be altered depending on how you're playing or what your play style is and in what fight you're doing and getting verified details on that is pretty difficult to do so take that one with a grain of salt next we have post-processing with a 33.6 percent change and post-processing here is going to clean up the image of course i didn't notice a huge difference it doesn't look like they're implementing something that is groundbreaking or anything along those lines i would probably just leave this one off if it's me uh, personally i do leave it off because that extra 33 percent is significant and then the most significant is going to be the shadows with a 53 percent and in this title the shadows uh, do take a huge hit when you go down to low. Unfortunately, it is very resource intensive. Maybe try to find a good middle ground there. I don't notice a huge difference on any of these settings between high and ultra. And so maybe just bumping this down to high and then evening out the rest, getting rid of post-processing uh, and that sort of thing, you could probably make up the ground right there. So I hope this helps you guys go ahead and figure out what settings you want to turn on and off in your copy of Darksiders 3 on PC. I've enjoyed playing the title and I hope you guys are too. Let me know what boss you are on and what difficulty down in the comment section below. That'd be awesome. And until next Tuesday, I'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>